Hello everyone, I am Alessandro from Arduino. I'm here to talk about some news about the open source tools from Arduino that are relevant for the ESP community. Uh, I will talk about four things. I will talk about the new IDE, the command line tools, the actions for continuous integration and the library ecosystem. Let's start with the IDE. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Arduino IDE. It's a, it's a very known piece of software. There are uh, it, it's been around for 15 years uh, and it's known as the de facto standard for uh, Arduino boards and non-Arduino boards uh, as it supports more than 250 boards, including, of course, ESP8266 and ESP32. Just to give you some numbers, it was downloaded over 39 millions of times do just during last year. Uh, and it's uh, localized in 66 languages. And also we counted that it is mentioned in at least three thousand books so it's a very popular piece of software and i'm sure most of you many of you actually uh, use it uh, for your development uh, uh, projects uh, of course uh, the architecture of the id is modular so uh, for each family of boards there is a core which is a pluggable um, uh, a pluggable a component that uh, uh, defines the uh, characteristics of each board. Uh, in case of ESP32, the core is maintained by the expressive team. It's uh, super well documented, super feature complete, very cleanly written. So that's what uh, you are using with the Arduino IDE to program the ESP32 boards. Some features of the IDE include the library manager, include a serial monitor where you can send and receive uh, strings uh, uh, back and forth from the board, a serial plotter, and uh, some other features, um, including uh, code examples that come with the library and the ability to customize menus and options for each board. So we decided to, uh, to revamp this ID based on some feedback we got over the years from users. One is, is about the limited editing capabilities compared to modern editors. We are now used to a very modern editor, so with many features, uh, with uh, a good user experience. So the old uh, IDE written in Java started to be a bit limited for many users. And also we got uh, the, the request for a built-in debugger. So uh, also there were some technological issues. The, the fact that the IDE is written in Java started to be a bit of a problem considering that modern operating systems are not supporting Java, uh, are starting to dismiss their support for Java. Uh, also the licensing from Oracle is not friendly with app stores and the monolithic code base and the complexity of this Java code base uh, was limiting, has been limiting the contributions from the community. So we also keep kept in mind that there are some alternatives. So expert users um, are using uh, other solutions like Platform IO, like the Microsoft uh, VS Code extension, or the Visual Micro plugin for Visual Studio, or completely different uh, IDEs for embedded development. So we decided to start a redesign process with some principles in mind. First off, we wanted a modern editing engine with a better user experience. We want to maximize accessibility of the IDE. Uh, we wanted to create a framework, an architecture that would allow for faster development of new features. And also we wanted to break the monolithic code base. So we split the, the, the IDE in a front end and a back end. The, the back end is what does the compilation, the upload, all the all the, the core logic is now in a command line tool, which is called by this front end. And also we wanted uh, an IDE that could potentially in the future support also Python, JavaScript, TinyGo, other languages. And we wanted to facilitate community contributions. Also, we wanted uh, an IDE that could potentially be integrated with cloud solutions for a sketch backup, sharing, and other things. So, we, after a very long process, after 19 uh, beta releases, after lots of feedback from the community, this September, so a couple of weeks ago, we released the 2.0 stable version, which was already downloaded by 1.2 million people just in 15 days. As you see, the interface is very, very similar to the previous ID, but uh, with some modern features. Let's see, let's see them. One is the auto-completion. So while you type, you get the list of methods uh, that you can call on a given object with their signature, with, uh, with their arguments. This is a modern thing that all editors have, and now also the Arduino, Arduino IDE has. 
uh, also, when you right click on a function or a method call, you can you have the ability to jump to the place where it is defined. So if you are unsure about what a method does and it's not clearly written in its documentation, you can right click and go to the source file of the library where this, that method is defined. So you understand exactly what you are calling and what it will do. Then the IDE has a, a very requested feature, which is a dark mode to relax uh, your eyes. And then we revamped completely the serial plotter. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with this feature. It's basically a simple way to, to plot visually data coming from the board. Let's see, let's see a video. So the new serial plotter was designed uh, in, with uh, uh, the ability with, of um, being of supporting uh, uh, high um, quantities of data. So it's, you see here, this is real time chart. This data is coming uh, written on the serial port uh, one data point per line. And you can also plot multiple series. And from the interface, uh, users can, uh, as you see, check all the numbers. Uh, they can enable and disable data series and they can export the data. Another feature is the in-app update. So when there is a new new version, you can just click on download and it will be automatically updated without you having to go to the website. Another important feature is the built-in debugger. The Arduino IDE finally gets the built-in ability to debug your sketches. They run on hardware, so they are not being emulated on your computer. They will run on the actual board and, but from the IDE, you are able to pause their execution and inspect their variables. Let's see how it works. You basically work normally in the IDE, then you click the debugger uh, button and this panel opens. Then you set the breakpoints close to the lines where you want to stop execution. And as you see, you can inspect the contents of the variables and you can even change the contents of the variables while the, 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 the sketch is being executed. Uh, it's important to say also that uh, this feature for now is experimental and is only supported for the Cortex boards. However, the architecture of the ID is modular. So it's basically a matter of configuring some uh, information in order to link the ID to the components providing debugging for other platforms. We just need to document a bit better this framework. Um, so as of now, there is no built-in support for ESP32 debugging, but the ID is almost ready in terms of architecture. So if you are interested in bringing this feature um, to ESP32 quickly, uh, do not hesitate to join us because the ID is an open source project. So you are totally welcome to join us on GitHub, start the discussion, and we will for sure appreciate your contribution in accelerating the implementation of the debugging for ESP32 platform. Let's see the architecture of the ID. Uh, as you see, it's based on the open source framework Thea, which is based on the same architecture as Visual Studio Code. Uh, so it's every, everything is written in TypeScript and is based on the Electron framework. And it's downloadable, try it now, on arduino.cc slash an slash software. Now, I'd like to talk about uh, Another important tool that we released uh, in the past uh, couple of years, uh, it's the CLI, it's the common line tool. So as I told you, when we developed the new ID, we decided to move all the core logic to the backend, to a command line tool so that people can use the command line tool directly, uh, even if they don't want to use the ID. Uh, what can it do? It's a, it's a very flexible tool, which allows you to compile your sketch to upload it to a board, install libraries, and monitor the serial console. How does it work? You can install it very easily. If you are on Mac, on Linux, you can just use Homebrew to get it, or you can just go to the website, to the GitHub, and download the binaries and install them yourself. Uh, then, in order to configure it for ESP32 boards, you just write, type this line of code where you set the URL of the package index for ESP32 board packages, and then you just install the ESP32 core. 
that's it and you're ready to go so you plug a board in your usb port and you type board list you get the list of all the boards uh, available locally on your workstation as you see there is the the, the port the serial port uh, and there is also the board name if it gets recognized on the right side you see the fully qualified board name fqbn it's basically a string that identifies the board um, in this case it's an arduino board based on the on the samd architecture and the board identifier is maker wi-fi 1010 um, that fqbn is important because you use it when you issue the uh, compilation command let's see how it is Basically, you are in the directory of your sketch. You want to compile it, and you type compile, giving the identifier of the board type. In this case, it's a Node MCU board, and it will be compiled, uh, as you see, directly without uh, any additional information you have to give, to, to give. As a second command, you can upload the, um, the compiled sketch to your board, so you just supply the serial port name and it will be done for you as you see this is very convenient because you can script it you can integrate it in your custom workflow and also you can use your own id suppose you want to use sublime text or you want to use something else uh, you can just use arduino cli from your shell and um and and uh, and be free basically so uh, another feature is the uh, serial monitor so with this command you can just uh, attach your terminal to the serial port to your board and have an interactive way of receiving and sending data from and to your board also there is an advanced feature that uh, not many people know that we released uh, last year and it's uh, uh, called build profiles it's a way to freeze and store the exact versions of the board package and the libraries you are using. So when you compile, when you issue the compile command, you just add the dump profile argument and on the terminal after the compilation, you will get this little uh, chunk of YAML, uh, which describes exactly the environment of this compilation. What do you do with this uh, with this chunk of text? You can copy it inside a file called sketch.yaml, uh, which you can later reuse to recompile using, using exactly the same versions. So in this case, when you compile, you just uh, call the name of the profile inside this file, and it will automatically get the library versions you originally used, the board package version, and you are sure that uh, your compilation is the same as the previous one. Uh, we call it reproducible build. As you see, the YAML file can contain multiple profiles. So you can store many combinations of settings and choose the one you want to use each time. Let's now talk about a more advanced uh, set of tools that we released. Uh, I'm sure that most of you are familiar with GitHub and use it to store uh, your projects. As you know, on, on GitHub, there is the ability to run automated tests after each commit. Suppose you, uh, you work on a feature, you commit it to your GitHub repository, you want it checked. We released uh, some GitHub actions uh, which allow you to run compilation of your sketch after each commit automatically on all the platforms you want to uh, support. Uh, this is an example of what you would see after each commit, after each pull request on your repository. It basically uh, tries to compile your uh, library or your sketch uh, on one or more platforms and report success or failure so that you uh, know that at least in terms of compilation your code is correct of course compilation does not guarantee that it will actually work correctly on hardware but for sure if it cannot compile it it will not work on hardware in any case so this is a way to accelerate your development and make sure you don't introduce regressions how does it work you just configure a very simple yaml file uh, 
uh, inside your repository. There are some examples in the repository. Uh, this is not the simplest one. This already contains a number of features. As you see, you uh, choose uh, uh, the, you select the sketches in case your repository contains multiple sketches. You list the libraries. Uh, and you say and you specify the board identifier where you want the compilation to happen. That's it. You can also do the same for libraries. So if you are hosting your own library on GitHub, you get you can just uh, configure all the boards you want to support, and a matrix of tests will be performed after, after each commit. There is also one more uh, uh, GitHub action we released, which is uh, um, able to uh, compile reports. So after you run, the, after the, the automatic compilation is run, you will get also some information uh, related to the uh, changes in resources used by the sketch. This is displayed if you want, also as a comment, as an automatic comment in your pull request, showing whether your change is introducing, for instance, an optimization uh, uh, um, in uh, or, or increased consumption in terms of memory, for instance, or in terms of sketch size. So you can keep track of the impact of your changes. And this is very important because you see it as a matrix on all the platforms that you want to uh, support. These actions are completely open source. You can find them on the Arduino GitHub. So get, get them now in order to increase the quality of your, of your code. Uh, last but not least, I would like to talk about uh, the library ecosystem. I'm sure most of you are familiar with libraries because they are the building blocks that accelerate uh, um, your development. Uh, as of now, this, these are the numbers. Uh, the Arduino Library Index contains uh, 5,200 libraries, uh, which is a huge number, also considering that uh, just during this year, during the past nine months, we got 700 more libraries registered in the index. So the community is growing even faster than in the past. We... Um, counted that 76% uh, of those libraries declare explicit compatibility with ESP32, uh, which is a huge number, which means that there is plenty of choice of libraries doing uh, whatever you want, from displays to network, uh, to radio, to communication protocols. Uh, everything is uh, uh, likely to be found uh, in the Arduino Library Index. Uh, one important thing that we did, uh, and that probably uh, is uh, behind this uh, growth of libraries is that we dismissed our manual approval process in favor of an automated submission process. Uh, now you just have to go to a GitHub repository called uh, Arduino slash library registry and you submit your library just by editing a file. So you submit a pull request uh, with the URL of your repository. That's everything you need to submit, uh, no additional information. Then a bot will automatically check your library, will automatically check if it's correctly formatted, will give you warnings, will help you troubleshoot the mistakes. And if everything is fine, it will automatically, instantly approve your library, which will be added in the Arduino Library Manager and available for all users inside the ID. And listed in the Arduino website. That's all from, uh, from Arduino. I look forward to discuss uh, we, with you. Um, I want to remind that uh, all this is open source. Uh, we want to support all the boards, um, all the platforms, all the technologies and the architectures, uh, and ESP, the ESP community, is so important for us. So uh, you are more than welcome to join development because all this is a collaborative effort. So if you want to improve things, to introduce a new feature, to share an idea, just reach out to us on the GitHub repositories, uh, which are the best place to join the development. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.